rapid toilet training is based on the work of some researchers, Azrin and Fox. So in the 1970s, they developed this procedure, this protocol for toilet training um, for individuals with developmental disabilities. So since then, I mean, it, it was a big like landmark study when it came out. Variations on that procedure have been kind of tested and retested in research, and it's been shown to be successful with many, many populations of, of people who need toilet training help. Um, the image that you can see there is the current version of their book, Toilet Training in Less Than a Day, not the Dr. Phil version. The Azrin and Fox version is what you want. If, if you do um, want to get that book as a reference to follow along, it's a great one. Um, it's kind of tuned for like little typically developing kids like toddlers learning to be potty trained, but yeah, it covers the procedures well. It's a pretty great book, but I'm going to tell you a bit more about what's in the book and why, it, why it's so good. So, okay, rapid toilet training, that original study in the 70s that Azrin and Fox did, the, the sort of population, the focus people of the study were nine adult males and they had profound intellectual disabilities and they were residents in an institution. So these are adult men who've not used a toilet much in their life or at all. Um, with this procedure, all nine of them achieved independent toileting with a mean of four days of training. So the, the image that you're seeing, that's me, when I read that information as a student, kind of went, what? That's so cool. How does this work? Um, how can I learn about it? It's pretty amazing. So what happened from there was, luckily, as you may have guessed, Pat is also very interested in toilet training. Um, and so I was lucky enough to be one of her um, master's students. And we did a study together on applying the rapid toilet training methodology to a, a different setting. So what we did was created a workshop for parents to attend so that parents could learn to do rapid toilet training with their own children at home. And that's because at the time, there was sort of a, a gap in the research where parents weren't that involved in toilet training research. It was still something that was happening like in, you know, an institutional or a clinic setting. And it's, you know, Pat and I believe that everybody should have this information and everybody should be able to toilet train their kids, right? That's why we are here today and tomorrow is to give you everything that we know because we think you should know it too. So that's sort of the logic that was applied to this study. Um, and five parents attended the workshop. There were um, three kids with autism, one with Down syndrome, one, one with an intellectual disability. I never met the kids. I only met their parents in that workshop setting and I taught them how to go do this procedure at home with their kids. Um, they had a mixed history of toilet training, not, not successful. They did really need this, uh, this workshop and this help. And yeah, like I said, I never met the kids. I never went to their homes. They only attended the workshop and then I gave them support over the phone. Luckily, it worked really well. So three of the participants were totally toilet trained, including initiating within five days. Um, one of the, the kids took a little longer to start initiating, about two weeks, and one of them didn't initiate as part of the, um, as part of the procedure. By initiation, I mean, uh, or not initiating, I should say, I mean, the parents still had to kind of remind the child to go to the bathroom or take them on a schedule, but they weren't having accidents. So um, this is more an issue related to the child's sort of current communication skills. Um, but it's something that actually later, after the study, after our follow-up phase was, was over, the child had learned to initiate, but it took longer. So the gist of it is, you know, parents can do this. Like, we had parents attend this workshop, really successfully able to apply this procedure um, on their own at home. Um, I should say, the workshop that they did, it wasn't just this sort of format where it's, you know, Pat and I talking at you. They also, like, we role played. Um, they asked me really specific questions about their kids. So it was kind of like what I'm about to tell you, plus a little more, plus a little more individualization. So um, that being said, I'm still going to tell you everything that I think you need to know to be able to do this um, at home with your own kid, if you're a parent or in a clinical setting. Um, yeah, you'll get all the information that the parents in this workshop got, just about. Okay, before we go forward though, like Pat was touching on this morning, um, rapid toilet training is really labor intensive. So in my practice, um, you know, in, at our company, Blackbird Special Education, we have a bunch of really, you know, young and robust and able-bodied people who do this for a living. Like we go in and help families do rapid toilet training with their kids. And at the end of the day, 
we are all so tired. It is so hard. Like I, I can't even really overstate how much work it is. So when you're a parent going to do this at home with your kid, you're thinking, okay, I've, I've, I've set aside the time. I'm going to be home at least a week here. I mean, maybe I'll, the dishwasher's acting funny. I'm going to get somebody to come look at it and repair it while I'm in the middle of toilet training. You can't, you cannot get your dishwasher repaired. You have to be so on it when you're doing this procedure. You can't answer the door, get the person into the dishwasher, pay them at the end, that's too much. You can't prep dinner. You can't answer your phone. Like you have to be utterly focused on toilet training. So if this sounds insane to you, you may want to do the long way, which allows you to have a bit more of a normal life. By choosing to do rapid toilet training, you're kind of saying, cancel everything until this is over. I'm gonna focus on it utterly, especially the first day or two. So yeah, don't say I didn't warn you. It's a lot of work, but the payoff is huge. It's over quickly. Um, the It's fun for the kid, I should say, or for the trainee, for the learner. We do everything we can to make it fun for them, but it's pretty exhausting for, for the trainer. So that being said too, I'd really suggest having an assistant of some kind I mean, if it's, you know, two parents together doing it, that's great. Although it is a test to your relationship to work on this together, <laughs> like to the level of assembling IKEA furniture. I believe that's an international experience that everyone can can relate to. It's hard. Like you have to really like be focused and be on it, but an assistant helps. Like um, Pat mentioned an, an aunt who would do a Nemo voice. Like I've had lots of ants come and help with, with toileting. Like it can be a really awesome if the child kind of has a connection with an aunt or another family member, a cousin who they, um, they think is really cool and kind of look up to, they might be a great assistant for you. Um, and the, I mean, there's also the emotional side of doing this with your own kid. It can be a little bit more frustrating, right? Um, I've had a couple parents say, I bet I could do this really well with someone else's kid and maybe we could just trade and they could do it with mine. And I actually had two moms in Australia who were good friends who both had kids with Down syndrome who needed to be toilet trained that I did kind of coaching for them together and they swapped for the first day. So they each worked with the other's child for the first day. Um, and it, it worked awesome. Like they, they got the kind of, they got each other's child over the initial really, really challenging stage. Um, and then it was kind of like getting easy breezy and they swapped back. So that was really cool. I'm not saying you have to do that. It wasn't my idea. I thought it was amazing that those, um, those moms came up with it and pulled it off. Um, but yeah, just an assistant can help somebody to even like, you know, grab the grab more juice and, you know, prep lunch for you. And because you really you don't know how it's going to go until you start. But you need to be able to have your hands and your body and your brain totally focused on this person's toilet training the entire day. Hope I didn't talk you out of it. I just want to be honest. Um, that being said, too. Uh, having some help from a behavior analyst who has experiences in implementing rapid toilet training can help too. Sometimes things are a little, go a little differently than expected, or you just want to check in and say, is this right? Should this be happening now? Um, and that's part of what we do in practice actually is people will, you know, ask us a couple of questions and want to just can I have a quick call with you. I don't know if this is this is going well and we can help them get on track. Um, so that's possible. But lots of if you have a behavior consultant or somebody involved, lots of us have done toileting and can give you some advice about that. So don't feel like you have to be alone in it. It's a lot of work, but it's sure cool when it works well. OK, so a few further things to refine and make sure that this person's a good candidate for rapid toilet training. The two most critical things are that the trainee will sit on the toilet for 30 minutes. A lot of people hear that and they go, no, my kid's not going to do it. But I will say, again, you're going to give them really fun things to do and a really comfy way to sit. Um, so for a lot of kids, let's be honest, it's an iPad. They're sitting on the toilet with an iPad. All screen time rules are out the window in this period. There's, you know, a couple days they're going to be in the bathroom a lot and they're going to have their iPad a ton. Um, and yeah, it's, it can be many different things. It can be coloring books on their lap. It can be playing music. It can be singing songs. Um, sometimes it helps to sort of signal to the trainee in some way like something different's happening here. So maybe they go in the bathroom and there's a bunch of posters on the wall of characters that they like, or there's balloons. Like they kind of, they go in and go, oh, okay, this isn't our normal bathroom. This is something kind of cool. Um, and having all the things that they like in there can really help. 
truly, if you put all the sort of fun things in the bathroom, there's less reason, reason for them to want to leave. Um, but yeah, my, my big advice is forget your screen time rules just briefly because if you have somebody who you're training who really likes screen time, it can be a way to get them to sit for sure. Um, and yeah, this, this is another one of those things where it can be hard to do with your own kid, but maybe not someone else's. So sometimes we find getting a helper just the, the first little bit, the first couple 30 minute sittings, and then a parent comes in, that can really that can really help to just boost the kid in the right direction. And it can show the parent too, oh, he can do it. Um, so yeah, assistance is, is really great. The other biggie that rapid toilet training will not work for you if the trainee won't drink a lot of liquid. Um, again, Pat touched on a bit like, is it safe? So that, that is a consideration. We have worked with um, some trainees who have like a you know, really specific medication ratio that they're on that could be diluted big time by lots of liquid. But no, of course, you, you can't do this method. They have to stick to their typical amount of liquid, but that's pretty rare. Um, for the most part, yeah, if they, if they will drink a lot of liquid, um, th this could work for you. And these are two things too, the sitting on the toilet for 30 minutes and the being able to drink lots of liquid. These are things you could work on before starting rapid toilet training. It doesn't mean you, you can't do it all together. You could kind of work on them as a prerequisite before you actually do the, the rapid toilet training procedure. Or you might say, no, I'm gonna do it the long way, which is what Pat will talk about tomorrow because neither of these things are requirements in the long way. So again, we think it's great if you can listen to both ways because we're gonna give you little tidbits throughout that could help your, your, um, your trainee and help other kids you might help in the future, other trainees you might help. So yeah, we hope you'll hang in and hear about both. Um, Cause yeah, they, you know, they both, sometimes it's pieces of both that work to really um, make it happen for some trainees. So 